I am unashamed. What about you? So, unashamed audience, we are welcoming for the first time to the unashamed lair, Christian Huff, husband of Sadie Huff, father of Honey Huff. Yeah. Is that is that a, is that a yep, good way to it. be yeah. described? That's a good way to describe it. All right, so so I have to ask you first thing, Christian. Every guest we have, I always ask them the same question as we get kicked off. What did you think? Because you've never been in the lair, right? Nope, first time right. in so, the lair. So you knew you were coming to the podcast. What did you think as you drove up and as you walked into where we are? What, what was what was going on in your brain? Well, it really is a lair. You know, it, it's like a bunker in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and you would not think that something successful comes out of there. <laughs> that may be the best description I've heard so well, this far. This is how it's going to be today. No, I, I think that's a good... It's a good summation. I mean, it's, the, the room is perfect, but then you come to the building and just, you just wouldn't think that <laughs> you wouldn't think that this is in the building. Nothing happens there no, of, yeah. of consequence. Yes. That's what you think. Yes. Yeah. You know what's ironic? <clears throat> just occurred to me when y'all, when y'all were talking is that when, when I had this room, this little room right here with the cabinets, we have running hot water, have a bathroom you know, a map of the premises. When I when <laughs> I put this this and told them to build it, I don't know why I told them to build it. <laughs> and somebody said, "Well, what is that?" And I said, "I don't I know." Don't. I said, "We built a room." I said, "If somebody visits us, they can stay in there." So we they put bunk beds in here. Yeah, it was a little part, and it, we called it the lair. But I never at that point there was no mention of any podcasts at all. I mean, but we, but when it came time, why but, are but we you here? Could, but you, <laughs> well, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to. <laughs> this, I just got sucked into a void. <laughs> uh, I built a little room on the end of a big barn. But does guy, it really own this place? No. Oh, Dad owns. No, it. I own it. Oh, I thought but Willie owns. He owns. The, Willie, he owns some Willie owns the land. Oh, he does own the land. Yeah, and I cooked up the deal for him, and I said, "Look, I've been buying oh, boy, this property." I didn't know that. <laughs> I said, "There's about 35 acres right down there." I said, uh, "I said, why should I buy it all? Y'all go inherit it anyway. Shuck out some money." Well, that was a good line, <laughs> and Willie <laughs> fell for that. Yeah, Willie said, "How much is?" It? I said, "I said 35 acres. I, I don't forgot what it was an acre, but not outrageous." Yeah. But I said, "I think we it gives us a little bit of on the edge of a hill out of the backwater." The backwater yeah. comes within inches several times of getting on the floor. I don't think it would hurt anything if it got back in here. <laughs> but, uh, I think it might. It well, might. it might. <laughs> well, this, the Christian, this is coming from a man. All this floods all out to our left and all out made my arm is going. It all floods. The road itself out there, you come in on, it floods. We're so, on the highest point. It's prone right? to floods. So, Christian, this is coming from a man that when I asked him one time, how do you get your underwear? Like, how do they show up in your house? He said, I don't know. He said, I open a drawer and they're in there. And when they wear out, I open the door and there's new ones. Like, like there's an underwear fairy. Yeah, kind of like the tooth fairy. <laughs> yeah, Most underwear. people, most people, I've, and, but you've thrown a wrench in the cog <laughs> with, with uh, you, you're, you're moving in on little Miss Sadie, my granddaughter. <laughs> No, he's not. He, he moved in. He moved in. He's there. not moving in. Uh, he's right. moved. But the only difference in what he, the way he's doing, is most of our women, you know, at least their mother, you know, they're quiet and they act about half scared. This is when they're <laughs> yeah, that's 16, missing. 16 and 17. No, none of our Your women. woman, oh, the woman you married, my granddaughter, and she would be y'all's what? Cousin, ne niece, niece. <laughs> niece. <laughs> she, she, little Miss Sadie, when she was five oh, years old, Sadie. somebody, you know, they, the Howards film everything. They got cameras and they film Miss Sadie when she's five, four or five years old, and Bible verses, and 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 the fear of God and the love. Of, it's coming out of that girl's mouth when she was five years old. Well, yeah. by the time she reached 10, it just escalated. What I'm saying is most females would not take it to the to the to where she went. I mean, yeah. when, by the time she was 20, 
she's reaching the world with just Bible, the love of God. It's yeah. one of the most amazing things I've ever seen since I've been on planet Earth. Well, so let's get... what my granddaughter, Sadie, his wife, uh, what she does. She's a, you know, our family, ever obviously everybody in our family has the unique gifts and a lot of ministry ability. But Sadie is, is a, a special progeny in our family. I mean, she just, and dad's right, from a very young age, there was something unique about her. And of course, you know, like everybody in our family, I've, I've prayed for not just my kids, but Jace's and Willie's and Jep's, that they would, God would guide them to the person that they would be able to be even more dynamic with. So you were prayed for long before you showed up. Yeah, That's what I think. wanted to hear, how y'all met. And, yeah, me too. And, I've and never hey, heard the story. On top of all of it, his name it's Christian. Well, that's I'm like, right? Yeah, okay. Maybe. That's Sadie. Dad, so, that, well, it was funny. That, 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 I, I was almost named Hunter. So it, really? both names could have gone either way by joining the family. So Yeah. Well, Dad asked me the other day when we he was telling the story about Sadie, and, and I said, yeah, and her her husband, Christian, is going to be on the podcast in, next week. And he said, do you think they named him that, knowing he would marry Sadie? I said, <laughs> I, I don't know, Dad. Maybe they had the forethought. To they think might of, have. <laughs> they might have. I didn't know the Hunter option. Yeah, that was a yeah. I, w- I was almost named Hunter, and then they wanted to, to name me Christian. So, you well, just have one brother. Yep, just one brother, and he played. Is he, he still playing? He's, yeah, he's playing baseball at Georgia Tech. Okay, now, who is yeah. it in the Book of Acts? Philip. <clears throat> Philip said it, all it ever says about him is he had four daughters who prophesied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, so the, and I when I saw what Sadie was doing, I said, well. All I can say is, at a young age, she started prophesying, she did. and she's still at it. She's just speaking the word. I, I've never quite seen anything like it. It's pretty well, I tried, because we weren't obviously going to have, you know, plan three kids, but I told Missy, I was like, I got it. I remember one night, I was like, if we have three kids, I got the names. And she was like, I don't want to hear them. I was like, no, no, you do. This is, this is really good. This is not something you're going to go, oh, no, this is terrible. I said, so firstborn, Hunter. Nextborn, Fisher. Thirdborn, Gatherer. <laughs> G- gatherer. Gatherer. <laughs> you had me at Hunter and Fisher, but you lost <sighs> me at Gatherer. Jason, is this a true story? <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course, it's a true, it's a true story. story. And she said, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Would you call would it you? Gaddy or something? What would be the nickname for a Gatherer? Oh. I mean, that's Gathy, not the point. Kathy, it's what we go, do Kathy. here. We hunt, we fish, and we gather. And so I, I, have, I see that your plan worked out beautifully with Reed, Cole, and Mia. <laughs> it became a sensitive issue, <laughs> that, but I thought it was brilliant. But it didn't. It didn't work. No. All right. So tell us. Uh, we want to know because none. Of, I don't think any of us know how you met Sadie and you know, give us the the background of how that. What's came. the? When's the first time you saw her? That's good. <clears throat> well, the well, there was a backstory before before we met, but we met. Um, Give us the backstory. We got a okay. whole podcast. Here. Well, so obviously, I watched the show growing up, um, so I'd had a reference to Sadie. And I thought she was very pretty. Um, we were the same age, and when I was a freshman in high school on my baseball team, I jokingly told some friends that I was going to marry her. Um, really? Really? Like called joke. your shot. I did call my shot as a joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, but you weren't really joking. But I, I don't think I was really joking. Yeah. <laughs> so this was the Babe Ruth, oh, Babe Ruth yeah. moment in your life. That's right. Yes. This was it. Up and you said, "I'm gonna marry that girl." This was it. And then my. Uh, and you're in Florida, right? Is that where yeah, you grew up? Yeah, yeah. Florida. Yeah. Okay. So, and then my freshman year of college, I was at Auburn, and we went to a conference that Sadie was speaking at. But she was doing a, it was like a multi-site conference, so she was speaking somewhere else. And, um, but we thought, we, we thought she was in the building. So we were, I was there with probably 20 friends and they said that out of all the guys there, that I was the only one that would ever have a shot with her. So they told really? me to message her, which, so then I messaged her that, that conference. And then she ended up not seeing it for two years, which is when we met. So you <laughs> sent her a note saying th- so I, they, they've nominated me. So it all comes back through <laughs> social media. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so I messaged I like her. That though she didn't see it for two years. Oh I yeah, mean, that's a pretty big. That's a pretty wide gap. It there, was big, yeah. That was twenty uh, <laughs> sixteen, and then we met in twenty eighteen. But uh, I yeah, when you any met, direct messages she yeah. Got. So when you met, you went, oh hey, by the way. <laughs> so this is funny. So I had known Bella. So which which platform was it? Instagram. Instagram. Yeah. Okay. So Bella is yeah. Sadie's sister. So Sadie's younger sister. I'd met her through a mutual friend because her 
one of their f- friends retired to the town I was from. So I got to know them through that. And then I would always tell Bella to set me and Sadie up. I would always say, hey, can you just you know set us up? My birthday is June 9th. Hers is the 11th. So I would always say we can do a combined birthday party kind of thing, which is funny because two years after that, we ended up getting engaged on our birthday. Um, so how did you meet her the first time? That's that's how getting, we're getting there. Getting there. That's, that's where I'm getting. We wanted the backstory. Talk as long as you want to. <laughs> no, I'm getting there. So, Dad, remember you said you're just going to nod every few minutes. <laughs> so it was the summer going into my uh, junior year of college. Um, I was just home for home, home for the summer. And from where I'm from, Sadie and a bunch of her girlfriends did like a girl's beach trip there. And um, my cousin saw that they were there. And my cousin was friends with Bella, who's Sadie's How younger sister. How did he sister. see that they were there? Social media? Just social media. Oh. Yeah. Just so posting pictures and naked. Phil, this is how the world operates. By the yeah. way, this is how, this is where. Yeah, no, here's where it's going to me. He's talking. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> so look, so you can post a picture on social media. Where'd you meet her when I was and on There are Facebook. people with skill sets. They look in the background and they're like, I think they're here. Yeah. Or you tag a location. But you know yeah. what? Dad's waiting Dad's waiting on the, yeah, that somebody set us up to walk off the yeah. football field. No, it doesn't work like that <laughs> anymore. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, you could throw me back in his time frame, and and the chances of me meeting somebody would be zero. <laughs> well, I mean, it was a long no, shot you, already. You yeah. could have had football quarterback at Louisiana Tech, and then you would have had a lot of people trying to like you. Right. Yeah. See, like you like, in a yeah. social media yeah. sense, yeah. liking your pages. So, so, so then, <laughs> so, so sh- her friends were on a vacation. I was where I was from, um, and then they just said, "Hey, would you want to get together?" And Sadie said, "Yeah, we're going crab hunting. Y'all can come if you want." Um, so I joined my younger cousins and went crab hunting with them, and then we met. Y'all were walking down the beach, and yes, know. but I was hanging out with her friends the whole night because I did not want to seem overly. Uh, That's good, you know. So I was, yeah. I was with her friends. The you whole didn't want to come player. across as pushy. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want to come across as pushy or like I was trying to. With do fear something. and trepidation, yeah. you 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 came to know her. That's true, and she and she <laughs> was she playing it cool. She thought that I was gonna like one of her friends, so she was jealous of that. Oh, so wow. then after Did the she night, tell you that or you just later after after, after the fact, she told me okay. that. All right. So then when we were leaving that night, she had actually followed on Instagram everybody in my family except for me for some reason. So I jokingly said, "Do you know that you follow everybody except for me?" And then she like kind of laughed about it. And then that night followed me back. And then that was when she saw the message that I had sent her two years ago. Uh, and went, then, Oh, wait. Yes. So then she took three days to respond. I think three <laughs> days is significant. Here we have the, the little emblem here. Yeah. The resurrection. Uh, the resurrection. Yeah. Um, so after three days, she messaged me back. And then we started talking on the phone. Then went on a date about two months later. Then got engaged like 10 months later. And then married like six months after that. So it, it, it. Present it, it proceeded quickly. It did. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, so I asked her on a date and then she said, this was in July. And she said, what about September? And I was like, that's in two months. <laughs> I was like, why do you want to wait two months to go on a date? She said, I'm busy. Uh, yeah. Well, she, she, she had just gotten out of a relationship and we were going to be long distance. So we wanted to cultivate the friendship aspect before we yeah. started that's dating. So I did it was good. Thing. Yeah. So she was in Nashville. I was in Auburn. So we did long distance for about a year. Just so trekking back and forth. Let's, uh, let's take a break. So Christian, we were talking about how that in your generation, there seems to be a lot of sensitivity, uh, which is really reflective of our whole culture. Uh, the woke idea, which, you know, that word, the idea was that you're woke as in like, man, you get it now, but it seems almost like it's digressing to me. But one of our sponsors uh, is, is a company called Patriot Mobile. And so they're a conservative cell phone provider, and uh, they're really kind of an island when it comes to that, because most of the big corporations that and we talk about cell phones because everybody has one. So you're going to get a lot of, you know, when your cell phone provider is one of these corporations, they're going to support things you don't necessarily support. So this is a company uh, that you can go with. They got the same great service. Plus, you get the peace of mind that they support free speech, life, and liberty. They can fit any budget. They have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team that provides exceptional customer service. So check these guys out. Uh, they're our kind of folks. PatriotMobile.com slash Phil. Or you can call them at 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation with the offer code Phil. Veterans and first responders save even more. So make the switch today, patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or call them at 972-PATRIOT.
You're actually getting to know each other via the computer. Not, not <laughs> well, cell phones and Well, we would talk on the phone, and then I, I drove up there every weekend to see her. So I'd be up there for three days every weekend. Hmm. So when you said y'all were with crab hunt, was that, were we on vacation? Was that at Gulf Shores? No, it was, was it was just her and three of her oh, girlfriends. It was in Seaside, yeah. So at what point did you realize the rest of the family... Did you say, uh oh? But you had a, you had, you knew the show. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you kind of had a, you kind of knew what you were getting into. Yeah, I knew what I was getting into. Yeah. But so, the first... during this, uh, going up to that, so during the talking up to her on the cell phone and all that stuff, you know, when was the first time you said, uh, I think I love you? <laughs> did you say, I think I love you? Or do you say, I know this sounds crazy? But I love you. How did you? How did you get her to see? This is a little bigger than I had. I, I, yeah. Well, we well we had both. She had been waiting for me to say it. Obviously. Um, <laughs> did she? Was say she it saying no, it? No, she to did you? not say it first. Oh. She, huh? No, she did not. Say, I said it first, but she was clearly waiting for me to say it. But we wanted to have like a point where we had a serious conversation about this is what I've been through. This is what you've been through, and kind of like the whole testimonial kind of side of the relationship. And then after we got to fully know each other, good, bad, and ugly, that was when we said, I love you. Yeah. Huh. Cause they want to be, I love you. Then it's like, Oh, by the way, I did this, this, and this. And it's like, Oh, I'm out, I'm out on that. So <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite movies, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, yeah. No. Have you seen that? Movie? I don't think I, maybe on TV, but yeah, I just watched it the other night. I used the line earlier before we came on air. You were talking about something when Eastwood said to Eli Wallach, Tuco, he said, there's two kind of people in the world, ones with loaded guns and ones that dig. <laughs> and he pitched in that shovel, dig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to watch that. Yeah, maybe I'm, y'all I'm, could have a movie night. Maybe we can. And, yeah. so, so when did Willie and Corey, when did they enter the enter the scene? Because, you yeah, know, when did you meet there's them their the daughter. Time. She's talking to a guy from Alabama, Florida. <laughs> I mean... Dad, Dad yeah. thinks this all so one when state, did, by the When way. did the parents, yours and hers, say, okay, wait a minute here. Let's see see if we can follow what's going on so here. So the first time, I had met Corey a few times before I ever got to meet Willie. That's a plus. Um, That's a bonus. He was so always, when you heard her speak, by the way, well, what did you think? You say, hmm, that may be my wife-to-be. Whew. You know, because she gets pretty <laughs> animated. <laughs> well, I thought she was awesome, but I, I'd seen her speak and stuff on social media, which you might not understand that, but I had seen, <laughs> vid- I had seen videos of her speaking other places. So that was not, you were drawn. I was drawn, drawn to her. her. Yeah. yeah. And I thought she was attractive and just all those things. Um, but I'd met Corey a few times. Willie was out of town. A lot of times I was visiting. Um, first time we met was maybe like Thanksgiving break. Um, we played tennis a few games and then got pretty close. And then the first time my parents met her parents were, it was in Nashville um, and that was the weekend that I asked them if I could marry Sadie. Um, my, so you asked their permission. You're like, yes, that was in April. And then we got, or that was in March. We got married or got engaged in June. Did they answer you quickly? Did they say, you we, we had, we had like a two hour breakfast. It was really good. And then they, they gave me the blessing. And then oh. two months after Did that, you was sense good. it was kind of a vetting process? Not really. I mean, we, I had gotten pretty close with them throughout, throughout the year. Um, but it, it it was good. I think I think a lot of times Willie intimidated me, so I think that was like my pe- like my turning point of like he did not really intimidate me after that conversation from that conversation. So have you heard the story of of when he when he asked about Corey? Mm-mm. Oh yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. They said no. Yeah, well, you can, you can tell the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was it happened in my house. It's the only <laughs> time Willie drove to my house unannounced. <laughs> And just they just came in, him and Corey. He's like, you're not gonna believe this. It's <laughs> like, what? They said no. Well, why'd you ask? So Willie was living in the f- the front bedroom. At least had a big house in town. It was kind of a ministry house because our house was the hangout spot. Jason, Willie, both were a lot of people leading them to Christ, and so they would all come over. They play cards every night. So he was living there in that front room. I walked up and I thought he left the TV on. There was like a war movie going on with the yelling and screaming. And, and so I opened the door and he and Johnny and Chris are going at it. I mean, it was it was hostile. And I was like, oh, 
Well, because I know I'm I'm pretty sure I don't want to botch it, but I'm pretty sure that when they asked where they would live, he said like in the backyard in the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they did not like that answer. No, they didn't. No. They had plans, but so by the way, Jace's was no as well, and then. I didn't even ask because I knew what the answer was. Well, it wasn't was. a no. It was a absolutely. So I went, and then it was followed by not. <laughs> like so a I thought, pause, like a. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, so in our fa- the the level above you, there were a lot of negative initially, but we we weren't quite as cultured, I guess, as we were. I think some people would be intimidated. I mean, you're obviously a big, strong guy, and but you know, Sadie is. Like to Phil's point, I mean, she has a lot going on. I mm-hmm. mean, she's a, I, th- I would, I've always deemed her, she's a powerful woman. She's a very bold wo- young woman. I mean, so, I would be a little nervous. Like, I've just put myself in, in, in your situation. Yeah. I mean, how, how did you get through that process? Yeah. Did it ever feel like, because you were going into a very well known person yeah. who, was, who was very dynamic? Did you, did that ever intimidate you or you just thought, no, because, this will work out. Yeah. I mean, what what do you was think? Was dancing about that? with the stars pre? That was, yeah, that was yeah, pre- she was only like so. Seven. You would y'all were just like dating at the time. No, <laughs> it's way before. No dating. That, that was like way two before. years before we ever knew each other. Yeah, oh. way before. Did you yeah. see that? I I didn't see it. my 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 mom saw it. My, my I think my I was kind of like whoa, you know, <laughs> you know, my the granddaughter is dancing on national television. I'm like you. <laughs> I don't know about all this. <laughs> it ended up being a really – well, I think even that like – That was about the time you sent her the uh, Instagram message. Yes, I, I was around that time. Well, even like platform-wise, just being on that show helped her from on a, from a platform perspective. No so doubt. Much, um, after the show. Um, sorry, what was your question? My question was – what? Oh, how, yes, yeah. You yeah. coming into her world yeah. – did, did that ever feel intimidating or do you feel like it, it – not? and I tell people all the time, Christian, that she married the perfect husband – the, to assist her in ministry and what you guys do yeah. together. So I, well, I, I know how it's turned out, but yeah. how did you feel going into yeah. it? Well, there were elements even just from like, you know, people trying to like encourage you, but it comes, a, it can like come across as like kind of condescending, yeah. you know? Um, so there were, th- there were things that leaders and different people had said of like, it'll take, you know, it might take you 10 years to find your like role and kind of like just these different things were like, it never really crossed my mind from the sense of like, you know, it didn't, it, it didn't really make me insecure in the idea of like, she's has a big platform and all these different things. Um, but I did feel called to, you know, to come alongside and, and help in whatever way I can and even just pursue the things that I'm passionate about. But there was a time where, you know, I just had a bunch of good godly guy friends around me and I had mentors that I would just, you know, if I felt anything or if I, you know, whether it was pride or insecurity, just confess these things and, repent of that and just try to walk humbly. But it, there, there was times where like, it was tough from the idea of like people, you know, change their perspective of you or whatever. And it's, right. you know, you're not going to be the one that's maybe providing financially X, Y, and Z or right. like, you know, <clears throat> what is your role going to be? You know, it's not, you, you always knew it was never going to be a typical relationship yeah. because she's so well known. And yeah. now you are as well as being Sadie's husband Yeah, because she was so well known first. I mean, that's, that's interesting. So for one of the first times I met you, Christian, you may not remember this. So uh, I think I'd met you once, but we flew in together. You were sitting in front of Lisa and I, mm-hmm. we were coming for an event and <clears throat> you had your Bible, you were reading something, in your Bible, the entire trip. And we had spoken, but, but you were reading your Bible. And then as we're getting here, ready for the circle to come into Monroe, you said, hey, I, let me tell you what I just discovered in this text. And so you and I had a little discussion about that. But I, instantly I thought, all right, well, this guy's this guy may be a keeper. Because, I mean, number one, he's into the Word of God and found that application for, yeah. you know, who you were. So that thank was, you. yeah, that was, well, thank you. I was impressed. Yeah, and even like there's, 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 there's moments where like you could let things like that get you. Even like if I do ever get recognized, it's like. Oh, you're Sadie's husband. You know, right. like it's never like, oh, you're a Christian. You know, yeah. it's always like that's what I meant. That has know? to be difficult. I mean, there, there's things yeah. like that, but I mean, if I let that get to me, then it just would. Yeah, oh, right. it, I would be miserable. Then it would affect how I think you could just form resentment, and it just wouldn't be healthy. Well, that's so. why, and that's why I tell people now that I know you so well is that I'm like he's not intimidated by what they're doing. I mean, he's he's yeah. embraced that. He's a part of that. Which, and we'll talk a little bit later about some of the stuff you got going on. And but, I love the fact that y'all built your whole relationship on 
Jesus and yeah. how you can help each other in that role, which I think those relationships usually work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's take another break. All right. So, so one of the things I was asking you about, so you're a new dad. Um, how old is, is Honey a year old yet? She will be a year old next month. Okay. She'll be 11, so 11 months next so month. So how was that? I mean, t- tell me about that experience in, in terms of just, you know, having a child and how that affected yeah. you. And- well, now it's awesome. When, 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 <laughs> when, fir- when, when, when we first kicked things off about a year ago, she um, never slept. And I know most babies don't sleep, but um, she had colic super bad. She um, had a really bad like acid reflux problem. So she would go through like 10 outfits a day. Um, she would sleep, then eat, but then she would scream for like three hours and I was, I was struggling. I was like, my patience is like dwindling. <laughs> like it, it would be, you would rock her to sleep and that would take an hour. And then the moment you stop rocking, she would wake up and then you try to put her in. So you couldn't get anything done. Like you right. couldn't, there was nothing that you could do. It was like 24 seven, like having to do this. Um, so from the beginning, I remember one time Sadie was taking a bath, honey was screaming and I just took a break and I went in the kitchen and made waffles. So Sadie like stormed in the room, not stormed. She re- come, came in the room, honey's screaming in the crib yeah. and I'm just eating waffles. And she was like, what are you doing? I was like, I can't, I, ne- I needed, I needed, a, I needed a few minutes. You needed waffle a, break. I needed, waffle a, break. I needed a few minutes cause it was just driving me crazy. Um, but now she just started walking. She starts, she's walking super early. She's walking everywhere now. She only says Dada which is adorable. Awesome. Um, so she's at that age where her personality is coming in. She laughs all the time. She's super active. She walks everywhere. And it's it's the most enjoyable thing now because you can see her personality. So it's been it's been great. But but starting off, it was definitely it was definitely rougher than I was expecting it was going to be. So I don't know how the differences in, in your families. I want to get into that. And the Corey side of the family, for sure. And last night was a perfect example. And I'd asked Christian about because I saw him in the stand. So uh, your our... I guess he would be nephew. Yeah, my nephew. Yeah, nephew is is playing on the same wee ball team. That's a wee ball, Jay. It's not even t ball. T ball. It's four and five year olds trying it's to play pre baseball. T ball. It's pre t ball. They hit it off a of tee, but it's it's but it's very funny. Oh, and... there's some things you just gotta say no. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because it 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 is it's wee ball, and this is no Zane did great. This is no disrespect, but it was funny because one of our friends asked how it was gonna go. And I was like, well, he can't talk yet, and he's still in diapers. So you tell me how this is going to go. <laughs> That's I a mean, great point. It was just like. <laughs> well, so he plays on the same team with Pearl, which is my granddaughter. So I went over. Corby had a game on the other side of the park. So I'm back and forth trying to kind of see if they, you know, I, this I knew was just going to be a, a comical thing with the little ones. But I look up in the stands is the point I was heading toward. And, like, most people have, you know, like the parents and maybe the grandparents will come, you know, so you may have. A little entourage of four or five people, which is what yeah. we do. I look up the entire stands. They're not real big, but the entire stands are full of Corey's family. I mean, Mamma Joe is there. <laughs> I mean, Chris is there. Corey's yeah. there. There's there. like 15 of us. <clears throat> yeah, it was really funny. And I thought, well, welcome to the Howard family. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. Um, so is how is that different? Or is, was your family the same way or – you know, how, how, what's the yeah. differences? Cause you live here now. So yeah. you kind of, you're a similar part. in the idea of like both of my, so my, my mom's parents are from the same town. My dad's parents both lived there. So I grew up being like 10 minutes away from both grandparents, kind of similar to, to Sadie and them. Um, but yeah, usually if, if me and my brother were playing a sport, it'd usually be my parents. And then, um, if my both sets of grandparents can make it, they, they usually would come, but it would not be, uh, cousins and aunts and uncles and it usually wouldn't be the whole entourage like they do. Yeah, yeah. I think we had four great grandkids last night and then 15 relatives. We took up half the bleachers. It was, it was amazing. Was... I told dad, I was like, dad, I mean, I was, I saw Mamma Joe there. It was her birthday yesterday as well. And I was like, she's watching her great, great grandchild play wee ball. I mean, <laughs> You just think about that. I mean, that's yeah. one is that's amazing legacy because she's still in such good shape in her nineties. But I mean, the fact that you could witness that, I thought that's a you know that doesn't happen. Yeah, just anyway. This child is my great granddaughter. <coughs> <Right>. Honey. <coughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. 
That's exactly right. Great so you're a great grandfather. Yeah. And every every meaning of that phrase, Dad. Yeah. That's you, <laughs> which we love. I did this thing a couple podcasts ago. Where was the last podcast? No, a couple podcasts ago about honey and the rock. It's at Psalm eighty one. Mm-hmm. Brandon Lake. Yeah. yeah, Brooke Ledger's friend. So I, was, I kept thinking. I was like, Is that why they name name? Or did y'all name? Yeah, tell us about no, that. That. That's, that song came way out. Came way after Honey was born. Yeah. Um. Well, I meant maybe the verse or whatever, but. Not yeah. What well, so it came from Proverbs sixteen twenty four where it says, "Gracious words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones." Um, but in hindsight, it's funny. So me and Sadie's first date we went on in Nashville or Franklin, I guess. The restaurant was called Tupelo Honey. Um, oh. that weekend, so when when we were dating, we went through like the book of Proverbs. We did like a Proverbs a day together, and we got to Proverbs sixteen twenty four. And Sadie just loved that verse. And then when I was up there, she wanted to do one of those like pottery things. You can like make your own pottery, kind of you design it, whatever. Um, and she had had a pottery cup and had honey written on it. Um, and uh, we just kind of stored that away. And then when we started, you know, thinking about names for a girl, she wanted to name something after Mama Joe. Yep. And her name is Betty Joe. So there really wasn't much good to, I mean, no. <laughs> no I no, like Betty Joe. No, it, it's sweet, but, but yeah. just like, just there Careful was. Christian. No, I'm, I'm not, you're, I you're, love her name. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, to, to remind something of her. And she calls yeah. everybody Honey. Yeah. Um, so we were like, it'd be sweet to name a daughter Honey. Honey Huff rolls off the tongue. And then our first date was um, at Tupelo Honey. And we loved Proverbs 1624. So it all made it was, sense. Yeah, it was, it was in there. Yeah. I thought it was in there. I yeah. like that. Well, my mom Joe's one of the classiest people I've ever met. Oh, in my she's, life. she's oh no, she's the best. Was... Yeah. Well, I mean, just I see why when you said she calls everybody honey, I mean, I, I would have never thought about that. I, even in her, to name your, your child after that quirk that she does. Yeah. Which is, is what I love about Joe is she's such a, she's a throwback to her era too, because she's like, she's very strong, strong willed woman, just but tough, you know. Mm-hmm. I never forget we were playing Scrabble one time on one of the family vacations and she was playing and Willie was playing. I mean, you know how Willie is when you're playing Scrabble. It's it just, can be difficult. Oh, it's just almost, you know, it's unbearable. And so <laughs> he was making Joe so mad. And so I could see her over there, you know, and finally he did one of his little moves, you know, and, it, and, and some word he's memorized from the dictionary, you know, and she challenged and lost. And she said, oh, you're such a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's- laughs> but I mean, that was a throwback. And we all got so tickled because we'd never heard uh, it. That's Man, I don't say anything like that, but that that's how mad Willie made her. Yeah, she it. he he is very difficult to play Scrabble with. Not not like he's an anno- like not he's annoying. He just knows every single oh, Scrabble yeah. word. It's, but it's, that's what he does. Yeah, it's very challenging. Kind of shows out, uh, which you know we yeah. could talk about Willie's. But then even even like with Honey, like say we just pray that she would be sweet and strong, which you know the idea of like resembling what what her name was was named after. I love it. Let's take another break. So I want to talk about uh, in our last few segments about some of the things that you guys are doing ministry wise, because I know like you guys have spoken together some is, mm-hmm. you know, what's some of the things y'all have done? Well, I didn't know cool? y'all were speaking together. Now. They've done we've that. Done, yeah. Yeah, we, come see me. Well, I did see y'all the other day. Yeah, we did, we've done some Q&A events together. We have um, another one planned for the summer. Um, but yeah, so speaking together in the sense of like, yeah, we've done some Q&As together traveling. Um and then a lot of messages that she does, we help, we kind of prep together and um, just kind of nailing in on verses or even just ideas. We, we talk a lot of things out together. So um, primarily she speaks by herself, but if we do Q&As, a lot of times we'll do them together. Right. That's cool. Which yeah. I think is neat. One of the things I've said about what, what's what been great for us to sort of watch Sadie's ministry grow, because I mean, she started out as a teenager, obviously from the show, but then she had a real you know following of teenage girls at first. Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously there was some guys that were liked her too. But yeah, I mean the, the ministry side of it from early on, it, she saw that opportunity as she was doing that. And now to watch her now as, as a young married woman, as a mom. And so a lot of stuff, when I hear a podcast or she'll post something and I'll watch it, it's been really neat to watch her evolution, mm-hmm. you know, and watch her grow. And so a lot of those same followers and people that have read her books and, you know, listened to her podcast are now, 
you know, themselves getting married or, you know, getting engaged. And so yeah. it, I just think it's just going to grow up until you guys are, you know, as long as you can do it. Yeah. Because they're going to grow with her and yeah, with you for now, sure. with both of you. Yeah. And it's even funny you said that because I was just informed a few weeks ago that. So I have 370,000 people following me on social, on Instagram. And 8% of those people are, are guys. So I was just informed that 92% of everyone that follows me is a female. That's right. Um, so That's because you're such a good looking right guy. Scary How did Sadie <laughs> feel about that? Well, she, well, well, cause it, she, she jokes because I primarily only really post pictures of her and honey. So she kind of says that's why. Um, but it is funny. Yeah, I was like, so if I need to grow my male audience, I need to start posting more manly things, I guess. Yeah. But it was just funny. I was like, I never would have thought only 8% of that many people are guys that follow me so, so when the group funny. when the group text went out that you guys were expecting my response because everybody has you know everybody's got to respond but my response was well i guess we're going to have a superhero because <laughs> captain america has married wonder woman so you know you know there's yeah. going to be some superhuman child that's i was up come somewhere out. in new york <clears throat> i don't forgot what i was doing up there but but somebody said you probably just went on vacation just for sadie's fun. speaking they said at a place up here and Mm -hmm. I think it was outside the New York City. It was in it was in uh, White Plains, yeah. White Plains, but anyway, so yeah, let's go in there. So I went in there, but I was shocked. I mean, there was twenty five thousand young ladies, young women, it was a house about full. Sadie's age, and I'm I'm looking at that. I said, man, she is really. Really, the speaker. Yeah, I think that may be the only time you've ever seen her. Like, That's the only time I've ever seen yeah. her. It, it was, was it was somewhere in New York. She State. happened to be there, and we were in the city oh, promoting awesome. something. Yeah, yeah. so the dad got to see her. And we were in the green room with her. I was impressed. She's impressive. Um, so tell us about uh, tell us about the podcast because you got a podcast. Yeah, so that that was even funny. That was what I was referring to. Even like with eight percent of guys following me, even trying to scale that audience has been funny and interesting. Um, but yeah, I wanted to start something kind of when COVID hit, and then I graduated college. Um, you know, the world was shut down, so we weren't traveling. And I was, you know, what am I passionate about? What I really want to do? Um, and I enjoy working out. I enjoy sports and, and, and athletics and those kind of things. And um, I wanted to do something that kind of shined a light on both, you know, spiritual training and physical training. And then that was when I was led to the first Timothy 4.8, which is where the 4.8 Men podcast comes from. I was, was going to ask you about the 4.8 because I, I, I thought it was another book. But you tell us that one first. Oh, yeah. What is it? And I'll tell you the one I guess. So is that the name of the podcast? So this is not Sadie's podcast. Oh, this is Christian. No, this is What's my her podcast. podcast called? Whoa, that's good. Yeah, whoa, that's good. Whoa, that's good. Whoa, yeah, that's, that's a good. Name. Yeah, that's, that's a good great name. name. Yeah. Uh, well, so I and we're I, always competing, by yeah. the way, with Sadie and in, in, yeah. in our podcast. Uh, she'll, she'll go ahead of us, yeah. and we'll go ahead yeah. of her. So I, I'd had some other ideas, like I somebody had thrown out like Bible and barbells. Um, but I thought that was just, was a little too cheesy. Yep. Um, Good call. Good call. Yeah. I, th I thought it was pretty cheesy. Um, and I'm just super passionate about the, the four, eight verses where Paul instructs Timothy and he says that physical trainings have some value, but godliness is a value in every way. Um, the translation that I have, but he, um, even just the, this idea that like, you know, we can train ourselves physically, but Paul says that that's only of some value if you, if you compare that to training for godliness. Um, so I have people on the podcast and we'll go through, you know, physical routines. What do you do? How do you train physically? And then kind of more lighthearted stuff. And then we get into, you know, what's your testimony? How do you actively train yourself spiritually? How do you d disciple your family? And what are ways that you do to train yourself in those areas? Um, so, yeah, I wanted to do something that encourages people to train physically, but challenges them to train spiritually. Um, and I just know for me, they both, you know, it's almost like a, the flip side of the coin. I know that if I'm healthy physically, then for me, a lot of times, then I'm going to be healthy physically and then vice versa. If I'm, if I'm disciplined physically and if I'm being healthy physically and I'm working out and I'm doing these things that I'm passionate about, then I'm going to be benefited on my spiritual side too. So I kind of do it to where like, if I go work out, I'm only listening to a sermon or worship music, um, from the idea of like, I want to try to. You know, if I'm going to get physically trained, I want to get something spiritual out of it. I don't want to go just try to get big and strong so I can feel like I look better. I want to do it to where, you know, I feel like God's given me something that I'm passionate about. And by pursuing that, I want to also be, be benefited from it spiritually. Yeah. So the hope is like every time you go train yourself physically, you're, you're thinking about what am I doing for myself spiritually? Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of been the heartbeat of it. It's been it's been fun and enjoyable. How long um, have you been doing it? Launched in December, so yeah, and you do. Five, it do we have a tweak him duck hunting? 
I have I not know. been. He's right here. I haven't been duck hunting with you guys. No, I have not. Yeah, we need to work him in. He's he's he's, he's very bright. You've impressed. <laughs> I don't mean bright in the mind. He's bright, plenty of bright there, but but he's just bright white. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Bright white. Yeah. I think he's wanting you. He'd feel better if you yeah. grow some whiskers. Uh, yeah. Maybe but some face. He berries. just seems very. Yeah, but he's color. got a. His... You know, he shaved recently. <laughs> I shaved this morning actually for the podcast. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't have a beard. I started to, but I, said, <laughs> I didn't have a beard. But <laughs> I'm glad you didn't because Mama said if she ever rolled over and saw you without a beard, she'd think she committed adultery. That's yeah. the line for you. So let's let's take another break. <laughs> To put him on the schedule, uh, take him back. All right, will you uh, go we'll with us? Yeah, I'll go with you. That'd be fun. Right. It's just what you said. It's uh, it's a great thing to go out there. You got a bunch of people. It's six, 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 seven people. You know, there's no profanity. There's no. There's nothing sinful. It, it's yeah. It's it's a good time out in the, out in the wild, as they say. You know. Yeah. Duck, ducks, ducks. We didn't really do too well this duck season, but we all like it. We just get up and go the next day. You know. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, oh, you got an invite for there the we go. Yeah, that's for the something well. It's I'm fun. inviting him. That means he, he likes you. Thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, that was his subconscious saying we've got to do something about <laughs> the brightness. Once you get I out, I literally there. thought he meant. Yeah, I've enjoyed listening to yeah, him so I much. Thought, it was like, no, he's it just. Like, I thought well. it was going to be something <laughs> from like a physical. Like I can help yeah. carry something. I thought, I yeah. thought that well, was where you were going. I think that that might be in the subconscious. There's something there. So I want to read it. That whole verse in the NIV which is what we typically do when we study on here, because it's a great verse. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Yeah. Which is a really good verse. It's a great verse. And, and your approach, I love, because the idea is that they are both important, but you could do, most people do one without the other. I mean, let's, let's face it, most people that are into fitness doesn't mean they're not believers, but I mean, that's really what they're into. But to value them both and to understand yeah. that with w without taking care of the eternal side, you can look as great as you want to here. But like, as dad's famous thing was, uh, this guy, workout guy at church his, his, uh, that met with us, his parents said, Phil, would you talk to our son? And he, he said, what? nothing we've said has reached him. Right. And then tell, tell what you said. I just walked up to him and I said, whoa. I, I saw him going across the parking lot. He looked like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he, he, asked, he was really. Yeah, they asked me to try to talk to him. So I, I, I said, I saw him about a week after that. He's walking across the parking lot going to his truck. And I walked up. I said, hey. I said, whoa, dude, you got some muscle. <laughs> I said. I was standing I said, beside And I was it. feeling it. I mean, he was just a. He torque. Talk, talk and he up, was you know. he was being uh the fellow was being uh what's the word? He he was being a little bit like standoffish. <laughs> yeah, and I said I said, Man, what what are you gonna do, this big hulk of a man <laughs> once it dies? And he's like <laughs> Yeah, then it really got I awkward. Said, See all that's going in a six foot hole, muscles and all. I said, What then? I said, You wanna sit down and talk about it? And I said, I'll I'll tell you what happened. He said all right, so he came down to the house and we studied yeah. for a couple of three That's weeks. About the I, way it went. That's awesome. He said, "I really I, appreciate." I was that. actually surprised he showed up. Wound up baptizing him in the river. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It was really great. But I mean, the the approach is just what you're doing. I mean, yeah, you, you, with God exactly. this with physical. Yeah. Training, yeah. So it's like it's yeah it's even trying to bring in because it's it it forms the thing to where like you know I'll have athletes on who are more known for physical stuff and they don't get a chance to really share their faith and then I'll have people that are super you know pastors and stuff that are more known for, are more known for their faith but then people don't really know how they wake up in the mornings and go ride their bike for an hour or whatever so it's like it's been cool to just have the different perspectives of things and even have people you know be honest about you know I valued physical training far more than I valued spiritual training then this is what happened to me and then now this is how I incorporate both in my life in a healthy way so it's even just trying to like you know bring out the idols and people because I think fitness can be a big idol and aesthetics and what I look like and those things so even trying to like bring that down and just raise up how are you training your spirit for like you said for the life to come when you get old as I am you're about what 25 23 23 at 23 add about 50 to 55 to that when you get there You'll be looking at your muscles and say, "Yeah, I was talked up at one time, but 
Boy, I'm, I'm so waiting on that <laughs> <Yeah>. resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> the re what I'm trying to tell you is at 23, the resurrection sometimes does not loom large. But at 75, 76, you say, boy, the resurrection has just gotten way bigger. Yeah. So <laughs> don't forget that. So, so uh, Christian Dad came in on one of our early podcasts when we were filming at our other spot where Tony and Phil's live now. And he comes in and we're talking about something. He said, he said, yeah. And I, and I noticed like his arm was just like really bruised. His sleeve was up a little bit. And I was like, on the podcast, I was like, dad, what happened to your arm? He said, yeah. So he rolls his sleeve up. His bicep had, has torn loose. Yeah. Detached. Detached. And it just rolled into a ball and, and, and it was just purple and remember that green and I mean, it looked yeah. Awful. It will haunt me for. for Somebody said, did you ever go to the dark? That's some nah, it'd be all right. <laughs> he it, said, uh, yeah, we well, called it. looked pretty good. What it's happened right. to it? Well, tell him well, what I you did. I don't know. I sent a, somebody sent a, sent a picture of it to a surgeon and said, said, what do you think? And he said, ask him, is it hurting him? He said, is it hurting? I said, nope. I said, it hurt for about a week. I said, but it turned purple, green, and I don't know what all. I said, but right now, no problem. He said, ah. He said, I can fix it in 20 minutes. He said, let it ride. You got to remember, Phil's got some old school tendencies. He he went, let's see, you didn't do any kind of deadening. No. Nope. I mean, you got to have a tooth worked on. He yeah. just like, go ahead. I can say anything. He, I think he's the only human. Is. Phil, I think you're the only human being on the earth that ever had the the urinalysis while awake. While watching the yeah, and with no camera. no deadening there either. Well, if you yeah. watch enough of Matt Dillon, he's been winged. You know, <laughs> somebody shot him so many times in the shoulder that for him to <laughs> trust me, the shoulder should be not even on his body. Yeah, it's been blown off. But but he they just, just they, they patch him up and he's at the end. Is of That's your inspiration. He's back in business. <laughs> I, I saw can count at least a hundred times he shot in the shoulder. <laughs> I saw Phil get a rod removed from his eye without yeah. any deadening because we were on a duck hunting trip and they're like, well, we'll have to put you under. And he's like, no, yank it out of there. Let's go. <laughs> so I'm saying. And, and I, that's happened more than once because I remember Granny oh, yeah. pulled a so thorn out. That, oh, my gosh. And, and, yeah, I don't know what the stick tolerance. stick hit my eye, went into my head and broke off, but it was way – how that kept from blinding me. But no, my mother – I said, Ma, I got something in my eyes. Oh, I watched it. Well, that was said, a different. And she issue. says, she was trained a nurse. She got a pair of tweezers and she said, good grief. <laughs> and she just started pulling on it. Oh. And it came out about that long, a stick about the size of a pretty good size. It was about that long. Tickled yep. your brain. What I was going to say You're is. Lucky I, on that one. I tried to, I mean, I, I've I've made this point because, you know, we're, we have our mutual family, uh, Jay stone because you do you work out with him so um yeah i used to a lot um boxing wise but uh, i work out with him every now and then um, yeah he's in more to the boxing yeah you know? he's, well, he's really he's into jujitsu jiu now yeah oh really he's a big jujitsu proponent oh yeah yeah i just don't want to be rolling around on the ground i don't don't want somebody to look over and see me down oh, willie willie was so funny last night he was he was talking about jujitsu from the perspective of like Every, like when you get in a fight, you just tell the person to get on your knees. <laughs> so he was like, somebody pulls out a gun, he's like, wait, get on your knees. <laughs> I got give a move for you. Give me all your money. Wait, get on your knees. <laughs> well, there it would be it, a pretty good skill so set hard. to have. Well, it's a defensive, right. it's a defensive yeah. uh, discipline. Oh, yeah. And I remember we got into this. One, I, I made a comment one time that he thought I was like dissing his physical workout. But I was like, look, you need to be just as passionate about spiritual workouts because i mean i try to get a through contemporary worship music or just yeah. bible study i get something in my head you know a couple hours a day i mean i'm like this is my but i look at it from that perspective i, right. I, mm -hmm. I you can't put a bunch of crap in your mind mm -hmm. all day and then think you're going to turn out to be something spiritual it's yeah. just not going to happen yeah well i think even with like muscles like you could think about like physical training like whether it's your legs or your chest or your arms, like there's spiritual muscles that you can work out too, you know, through yeah, exactly. prayer, reading, and like, you know, to. Yeah, that's a good policy there, Kristen. It yeah. is. Yeah, I, th I think, and I think in our world, I mean, I think there's an audience for that. I mean, I just think that's a creative, good way, a good platform that God. You has and given. you and my granddaughter, y'all have uh, 
Y'all, 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 y'all are doing well, my man. You're to be commended, both of them, I think, don't you? Oh, I think they're great. In Thank today's you. culture? So, and well, perfect segue, Dad, because we, we have, Christian, we have what we call an unashamed overtime segment that we do that's that's on uh, that's on Blaze, uh, blazetv.com slash unashamed. So in that, I wanted to, Dad, just segue it. I wanted to talk about your generation from your perspective and yeah. the best way to try to reach that generation, because a, lo- a lot of our listeners are you're Gen Y, right? I think is that what they call yours now. Or? Uh, Gen Z, Gen X. Okay, whatever. Something like one that. Of one, of the, so, one of the Gens. One of the so one of the Gens. So we want to talk. What they're calling them something. Yeah. Well, where they get that? That's not going to catch. Where they get that? It's not. Don't worry well, about it. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just one of those things. So, uh, so we'll uh, we're going to go over to overtime. So if you want to follow us over, we'll hear uh, Christian's thoughts on that. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.